Color is energy that happens to be vibrating at a frequency that our eyes are designed to detect. Just like radios pick up and interpret radio waves into sound, our eyes pick up light waves and our brains interpret them as physical environments. Like many other aspects of design, color theories are subjective. But if we imagine smells, touches, and sounds as inputs for our body's sensory receivers, we can start to visualize the chemical reactions occurring inside our brain. These reactions invoke emotions, and the same is true for the input of color. Generally speaking, there are two ways color is transmitted to our eyes, additive color and subtractive color. Think of additive color in terms of light emission. Think of subtractive color in terms of absorption. In additive, certain wavelengths of light are being emitted from a source, and those emissions are being received by our eyes. Additive color requires no external light source to be viewed. All wavelengths of color traveling together create the full spectrum of visible light, appearing as white light to our retinas. Subtractive color works in the opposite way, and an external light source must be present to view it. A green plant absorbs all wavelengths of the visible spectrum, and even some outside of the visible spectrum, except for green. Therefore, when we look at a plant, the green wavelength is the only one left for our eyes to catch. Color systems like RGB and CMYK use these subtractive and additive methods. RGB is additive and should be used only for sources that emanate light, like the screen of a monitor or a phone. CMYK is subtractive and requires an external light source to be viewed. We print in CMYK using cyan, magenta, and yellow pigments with a constant of black indicated by the letter K. R, G, and B stand for red, green, and blue, corresponding to the wavelengths emitted by light-emitting diodes and liquid crystal displays, also known as LEDs and LCDs. This is the visible spectrum of color. All colors visible to the average human eye can be found inside this diagram. The edge of the diagram represents pure, completely saturated hues, measured by wavelengths in nanometers. White is found in the center, farthest away from the highly saturated edges. The line of purples are also fully saturated, but cannot be represented by wavelength because they can only be made by the interference of two light waves, those of red and blue. This is the spectrum that can be conveyed in CMYK, and this is the spectrum that can be conveyed by RGB. We can imagine how obvious discrepancies can occur between colors on a monitor and colors when printed. That's why it's important to denote when you're working in Adobe software, whether you're using RGB or CMYK. Now we can't talk about color without talking about light. We measure different colored white lights with the temperatures in Kelvin. This method of measurement references a theory of quantum physics called blackbody radiation. This is the arc of the blackbody curve within the visible color spectrum. The higher the temperature, the cooler the light. All of these aspects together impact how we perceive our environments, and these are just the very basics. If you have further interest in the physics of color, check out the resources used in this video.